Hey there, this series is called Be a Better Field Target Shooter in 15 Minutes. And the idea is to take different topics uh, about field target and sort of break them down into bite-sized pieces in a, to a short format where you can, uh, in a short amount of time, you can get some tips and some uh, techniques to try to, to be a better field target shooter. And what I'm doing is I'm interviewing different field target shooters from across the country and asking them about different, different topics. Uh, tonight, I'm going to be talking to Brian Van Lu, and he lives in the northeast of the U.S., he started shooting field target around 2014. Um, he uh, started in hunter class, but then he quickly uh, switched to open class and he prefers open. He's dabbled in WFTF, but uh, he he really prefers open. He's He shoots both PCP and piston. And so um, we're going to talk to, to uh, Brian now about temp shift. So hello, Brian. How are you doing this afternoon? Hello, Philip. Uh, I'm doing I'm doing well as well as it can as well as it can be right now. <laughs> right, right. All things considered. Uh, exactly. Thanks for meeting with me uh, today to talk about temp shift and to share some things you've experienced and maybe some solutions to. Um, you know, temp shift with the scope is is kind of what I had in mind. Although it could lead to other things like temp shift with the rifle itself, but. Have you experienced temp shift? And and um, if you have, was there a, a specific temperature that you noticed it changed? So in, in my case, the, my main field target rig I've used for a number of years. Um, I do have, so when setting up the gun and everything, you don't think about the temperature shift aspect of it. It's kind of like the last thing you come across, you want to get everything else working. Then, then you worry about the, the, the temperature issue. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, I've got it in mind. Uh, what I see is, is it's around 65 to 70 degrees is where I see oh, a okay. shift. And, and what I mean by a shift is that if it's, if it's below 65 degrees, a cooler, a cooler match, uh, I'm affected more on the farther ranges, like 50 to 55. In fact, mm -hmm. when I range, like on a sight in uh, a 55 yard target they have for a sight in, it'll range around, you know, 52, 53 ish. Okay. So I got to know when you've crossed that, that shift point, uh, because a lot of times when you go to sight in, you know, you've come out of your car, the gun is warmer. Right. And you, you you come there and and you, you put it down. You go to sight in, and everything's arranged perfectly. And I watch these guys. They sit there and they shoot it like three shots. And they said, "Guns on! I'm done." <laughs> Not me. I I sit at the line as long as I can because I want to watch the gun change if it's going to change. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things you can do is you can put a uh, these temperature temperature strips that you can get mm -hmm. that uh, you can stick on your your scope and it gives you a, a, the, the temperature, it gives you an idea of the skin temperature of the scope. Right. And it's good and bad because the, is the um, you go to a match, it's cool and it stays cool. And you know, you're below the shift point. And in my case, my wheels marked for above 70 degrees. Mm -hmm. So when it's below, I'm going to range short on the farther. And I, I, I prove that at, sight in and once i know i'm ranging short at the 50 to 55 and it stays cool i'm golden i know what i know it's going to be in there and i'm i know i'm going to just compensate for it the problem is oh let's go to the other extreme you get to a match it's 70 degrees 75 degrees you bring your gun out it's not going to go cold it's going to go warmer you're golden right go, go shoot no problem sighting make sure everything's good the problem is when you get to a transition point mm -hmm. where you start at a cold time in the beginning of the match, and then you get to into the match and you cross through that. And at sight in, you know, you can prove yourself that you've gone through and you're cold. And if you get there early enough mm -hmm. and just let your gun soak in the ambient temperature. Mm -hmm. But what happens is, through the match as it warms up, okay, you know you're going to run through that temperature shift. And you say, well, I have no problem. I've got this magical tape. Well, this only tells you what the surface temperature of your scope is. It doesn't tell you 
the innards and how long it takes and how much warmer you are for that the speed of the the temperature to soak into the critical pieces mm-hmm. that cause the shift. Right. So it's it, it gives you a it's kind of a it's a tool, but it's a it's a weak tool. Right. Right. And you got to watch that. And if you get if the, the other flip side is you come out, like I said, the person comes out there, they, it, it, it's cooler out. They bring the gun out from a warm hotel room or the car and they go and they, they shoot and it says, yep, range is perfect. Shoots right where it's going to be at. Then it sits there for like 45 minutes mm-hmm. and then a the match starts. What's happened? Now your gun sat there, the scope sat there. It's cooled down. It's cooled down. You don't know it. And you go to range the far ones and you say, oh, it's 52, but it's 55. Mm-hmm. And you shoot it as a 52. Guess what? That's a miss. These right. are, the, 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 the ship thing is something you do like toward the very end of, of finalizing your rig because okay. it's something, it's like chasing a ghost. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't know when it's going to actually appear. If you, you have an idea with the tape, but there's no guarantee that that says 70 degrees. And even if it says 75 degrees, it depends how quickly it's warming up outside right. and, and how much it's soaked in, like I said, soaked into the innards of the, of the scope. Yeah, I've, and, I've used, uh, I've never used the tape uh, thermometer, but I have used a laser th- uh, thermometer, like I got yeah. a Harbor Freight or whatever. But it's yeah. the same thing. It's just telling you what the surface is. So if I just happen to set it somewhat in the sun, you know, it's it might heat up the outside, but not the the guts of it. You know, so so kind of like what you're saying there. What what I have done at matches when I know it's cooler out, but I'm not that much cooler, and I know I'm going to run through it. I'll take the, if I can. I'll take the gun. I'll I'll put it out where the sun hits it. Uh-huh. I'll, I'll artificially get it warmer, mm-hmm. and then cross my fingers when I start the match. It'll last. But as the temperature and the ambient temperature rises around it during the match, and, and it, you won't fall back through that. If you don't want to fall back through it and then come back through it again during a match, the match is three hours long. Right. It could very well go two ways, and that's that's going to give you headaches just, very uh, right. twice as much. So do you, um, to sort of comp, well, you said whenever it's cold and you're ranging short, do you just uh, sort of uh, estimate or do you have separate marks at 50 and 55 for cold versus hot? I do not have separate marks. Okay. I, I know I'm only affected at 50 to 55. Mm-hmm. So when I range in there, I just mentally add two to two and a half ish yards, basically right. as, as a rule of thumb. Uh, and I can only tell you from my experience, maybe some others can say, well, it affects more yardages than that. But that's only the place I see it being a problem. And and that just comes with the experience shooting when it's cold, shooting when it's hot and just. Yeah. I mean, I've, heard, it, you know? I've heard people sit there and say, well, you can put it like the real geeks, right? I'm going to put it in my freezer. I'm going to pull it out. But right. then you still don't know what the insides are doing. Right. You don't know when they've crossed over it, it it gives you some data but it's not the best data yeah yeah it can be do, you, do you think this affects um because i've i've experienced temperature shift in one scope and not so much another do you think it's uh has anything to do with um if your scope is a high-end scope or a more of a budget scope is it does that have anything to do with it or it's, is it just the nature of the equipment uh I, I I think it's the nature of the equipment. I, I mean, I think you could almost have two same model scopes, and they will be, they will behave a little bit different from one another. Mm-hmm. Not not a lot, but a little right. bit. And in fact, I probably I think I have a higher temperature shift point too, where I have another problem. But I rarely ever get to that point, so it's not for it's. I've never really investigated that end because I've never had to deal with those kind of conditions long enough to really get any kind of information to, to right. figure something out. So you're thinking like over a hundred degrees or something like that? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's hot. Yeah. It's yeah. really hot. And you know, you, you try, you know, you try to cover your, your scope with a shade or a, a towel or something, but right. if it's just, if you're just out in the, and, and it's just, it's just hot and there's, there's right. no way to get away from it. Right. You gotta yeah. just, you gotta just roll the punches. I wondered too before if it could have anything to do with your rings, but I don't think so. I think it's the internal 
you know, it's all the, the inner workings that are just expanding and contracting. And yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a, I don't know that much about the innards of a scope. All, all I can say is that, uh, you know, I think some people will argue this, but I think all scopes will exhibit this to some extent. Um, high end, low end. I mean, do you think it's more noticeable? Um, with the power of scope. So I'm a hunter, a hunter class shooter. I'm shooting at 16 power. And if you're shooting open and you're shooting what? Uh, 40. 40. Okay. So it's a higher magnification. Do you think it's maybe more noticeable for a higher magnification? I do. Yeah, I do. Well, for one, I don't know how, how much at 16 power, because I've never done this, um, how much it changes normally. Right. And how much of that is what I'm saying saying in, in the 50 to 50 yard range is really discernible. I, from what I, understand, what I understand, it's hard enough for the hunter guys yeah. to do it when it's perfect. And then yeah, to tell between 50 and 55 can be very challenging. I am I'm not sure how you how much there if there's a difference if it's, because being 16 power, maybe you don't see it. Right. I, I just don't know. Right. Very interesting. But I would guess I would guess the higher mag is more susceptible to showing this than a lower mag. Right. So I would think uh, people watching this, you know, if you if you encounter temp shift in your scope, it's not that the scope is defective or uh, that it's a cheap scope or you got a bad one. It's it's probably something that a lot of scopes or most scopes probably encounter. And it's just a matter of you learning where that temperature shift is. You said that yours is what, around 65, which is actually higher than I thought you was going to say. I thought you were going to say lower than that. So um, just learning your equipment and knowing what it's going to do and paying attention to the, the weather. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. I mean, I've also even taken the gun and after sighting, instead of putting it, the sun's not out, I'll take it in my car, start to heat it up in the car, just let it sit in the car for, you know, 10, 15 minutes, just yeah. trying to make, trying to artificially get it warm to, to stay right. at that upper level so it doesn't drop through. Yeah. I, uh, lots of times when I first get there, you know, um, I, I guess depending on what the weather is, I might set the gun out and just let it sit there for a while before I even fool with it, you know, just to let it get acclimated because um, if it, if it was really warm in my, tr my truck and then it's cold, you know, I want it uh, sort of like what you were saying, you know, you either, you either want to shoot it hot or you want to shoot it cold or, you know, to know what you're, what, you, what you can expect from the results. So. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you got to understand where your shift point is because this, putting it in the sun versus putting it in the car and mm -hmm. all that is just to try to cheat a little bit when you know you're going to have a problem. Yeah. If, if you're, if you're already in the upper end or in the, in the cold end and you know, you're never going to cross through it, there's no reason to do anything other than let the gun acclimate to the, to the temperature. Cause that's, that's that way the gun, you know, you talk about shift we're talking about scope shift. It could be gun shift. It could be something like the gun changes speeds. Right. Uh, my gun shooting a PCP. I can't honestly say I've seen it change. It may be that it has changed some. It may have slowed down as it gets colder or speed up or whatever the case may be. But I, I can't honestly say I can see that mm -hmm. but at, at, at the time I shoot. It's, it's more of a, I've seen it. I've seen it in a Springer. This right. year I shot, I shot Springer quite a bit at some GPs and I had seen that where I would come out with the gun seven o'clock in the morning, sight and range opens, get that gun out there, shoot, 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 dialing it in. It's, it's right where it's supposed to be. It's hit everything. Great. I come off the line. I find out when the safety meeting is going to be, I go 10 minutes before the safety meeting, go back on that line, shoot it. And it's shooting high. It's soaked into it. Mm -hmm. the gun, I think. And the reason I say it's the gun this time, it's because it was like a six click error to bring the, the, it back down at 55. And it was six clicks, everything down mm -hmm. to 10 yards. Right. So, so it was even across the board yeah. where the scope shift that I've seen, it's more or less on the upper high. end of the yard, higher, higher, uh, longer shots. Yeah. Higher, higher yeah I would think so with a, with a spring piston gun, because there's, there's so many, uh, there's so much, so much mechanical things happening in that gun. You've got grease, you've got, 
a lot of moving parts and um, yeah it's it's much more mechanical driven than than a pcp and uh, i can honestly say uh down there at central carolina grand prix is where i saw this and it happened to me two days the first day saturday I got around, it was cold, it was 50, it was like 52 degrees, you were there. It was like 52, it was quite chilly. And uh, I was good until I shot around about three quarters of the of the course. And then the last 25% is out there in the sun. Yep. <laughs> and I'm shooting a Springer and I don't have a lot of time on or the Springer and I'm starting to miss some. I'm like, all right, is it me? Is it, am I making bad wind calls? Am I not holding it? The gun right? Am I, is it is it me? And I and I got through the and I I, I missed quite a few in that last twenty five percent. In the last lane we shot, the far target was at uh, uh, it was a fifty five yard target. I missed it, and uh, I was shooting with Artie, and he shot it, got it down, and I said, okay, this is our last lane. I'm going to sit here and see if I can figure this out. Mm-hmm. So I go and I take those six clicks out, mm-hmm. and I was able to shoot that thing down four times in a row. <laughs> I, I, somewhere is somewhere when it warmed up it shifted but i just didn't have enough information i haven't shot that gun enough to understand what i mean enough i mean like you got to shoot a gun for like for a year yeah it's not like just shooting it you know 10 times you, you got to really spend your time in on it and you got to become one with your gun so to speak and, and and more that more than just the scope more than just it's behavior. You just, you just got to spend the time with it because once you become very familiar with it, you'll be able to understand when you see things, what it is. And I just didn't have enough time to know. Yeah. Yeah. If you spend enough time with your equipment, you'll, you, you almost know that something's not right, you know, and yeah. even I've even been able to like, it'll sound different, you know, some just the slightest little change in the pitch or something like, okay, something's not right, you know, and, um, but anyway, that's, that's really interesting. And I've, I've been uh, guilty of doing this. If it's, if it's really hot, I'll cover up my, my, my rifle and, and scope just because I don't want it getting super, I don't want it to be super hot. I don't want it, that temperature fluctuation. I don't know if it's going to hurt anything, but if I can help it, right. I want to keep the gun as consistent right. temperature wise as I can. So, yeah, you, you want to, you want to play the best odds you have of, of not having a problem. Yeah. And the best thing you can do is, 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 protect your gears from the elements because yeah. uh no one else is going to <laughs> lots of times you'll find me uh if it whether it's really hot and sunny or it's raining the gun is covered up and protected and i'm in the weather you know <laughs> so, yeah 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 well, that's the way it should be right yeah <laughs> <laughs> well, i appreciate this uh discussion a lot of good information there and uh, things to think about i think it, what, what it comes down to is spending time with your equipment learning your 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 rifle, your, your scope, and just understanding just with experience what's happening and, um, and doing your homework really. That's what it comes down to. Anything, yeah. uh, anything else you'd like to say before we close our session here? No, I don't think so. I appreciate you taking the time and then thinking of me to, uh, sure. to do one of your talks. Yeah. Yes. You're, you're a great shooter. And, uh, usually whenever we're shooting a grand prix together, I, you're the one I'm trying to match the score with at least. So you're a great shooter. Uh, I'm okay. That's all I look at. I'm just, I'm just, I'm a good shooter. I'm not a great shooter. Oh, you're, you're, you're great in my book. I appreciate it very much, Brian. And thank you. Thank you very thank much. You.